Thank you everyone for joining us. Today's media availability will feature Jesse Zardes, followed by Donald Nagy, and then head coach Caleb Border. As usual, if you would like a question, please click the raise hand button and I'll make sure to call upon you. For our first question, we'll go to Pat Murphy, followed by Ori Benatar. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Jesse, hope you're doing well. Um, just to kind of get this out of the way, I'm, I'm curious on your reactions to the uh, change in logo, change in name to some degree. What was it like when you guys found out in the locker room and, and what do you make of it? Yeah, so, um, you know, we'll always be the crew and, you know, in the, lo in the locker room, um, we're excited about, you know, the new training facility. We're excited about the new stadium. And, you know, our primary focus uh, right now is just tomorrow's game. You know, we got to take care of business. We had like six games in 19 days. so. You know, our primary focus is on is on the season, you know, winning games and, and the rest will take care of itself. Thank you, Jesse. Next, we'll go to Warrior Bantar, followed by Jordan Angeli. If you'd like a question up for Dad, click raise hand. Hey, Jesse, good to see you. Uh, I was wondering how the shoulder is, and also I wanted to get your description of the event that happened where you hurt your shoulder back at that Monterey game in Columbus. Yeah, so, I mean... Um, uh, geez, I, I, I mean, it, the shoulder is, uh, it, it's a, it's injury obviously, but I mean, I'm just going to play through it. Um, I'm constantly doing whatever I need to do to, to be on the field and be out there for my team, but it's something I'm just dealing with on a daily basis. Um, it happened during the Monterey game at home. Um, I had a chance, uh, on goal, but the keeper missed the ball and kind of spiked my legs as I was falling, uh, which caused me to just land, uh, it was like 193 pounds on my shoulder, you know? So, uh, I felt the pain. It was, um, I was lucky enough to rest a little bit, but it's something I'm just gonna feel for six to eight weeks, you know, and over time, uh, hopefully the pain will go away, but until then I'm just going to keep playing with pain and, uh, and just try to keep, uh, helping my team get wins because we have so many games in a short amount of time. Thank you, Jassy. Next, we'll go to Jordan Angel, followed by Brett Hilburn. And if you'd like a question after that, click raise hand. Hey, Jassy, thanks for chatting with us. Good to see you. Good to see you as um, well. Uh, my question is, you guys know Toronto FC very well, but under Chris Armas, they're looking a little bit different. What, nor what changes have you noticed in the way that this team that you're facing tomorrow night is now playing? Yeah, maybe, you know. Maybe, oh, go ahead. And maybe where do you think you can um, exploit them? Yeah, so, um, you know, Toronto was was in the same boat as us, you know, early on in the season, they were in Champions League and um, playing a bunch of games home and away and uh, and dealing with a bunch of players out, a bunch of uh, lineup rotations. Um, so uh, we're, we're kind of curious on which lineup they will uh, they will have out uh, at the game against us. Um, we have a, project, a projected lineup and, you know, our game plan is to uh, to obviously uh, you know, try to, uh, I mean, I don't want to say too much to where, you know, it gets back to them. They know how we're going to play. Um, but um, we, we saw a couple of weaknesses um, or at least uh, certain areas that um, other teams have exploited. And we're just going to try to do the same thing. Um, and you'll see it. You'll see as soon as the game start, you'll see it um, if you watch this play before, because you know the things we do and um, you'll see and, and understand um, the way we're going to try to play against Toronto. Next Thank you. Hill, Hill Brent, followed by Pat Murphy. And if you'd like the final question after that, please put his hand. Yeah. Hey, hey, G, how are you? Uh, pretty good. Yourself? Excellent. Thanks for asking. Um, how much did you guys consult uh, or even look back at uh, Chris Armas's, you know, previous teams and, and kind of how they play and then how, you know, he's maybe transitioned that to Toronto? Yeah, so you have to understand, you know, Caleb and Chris, they've played against each other for, for years, you know, so it's nothing new. Um, so Caleb knows uh, 
his particular style. Um, and, you know, uh, we watched obviously their last three games, uh, film on, on their last three games. And, you know, um, depending on their, their player personnel, um, we we're just going to obviously apply what we did on the training ground today uh, to the game, depending on who's playing, um, who's starting for them, you know, because there's certain there's certain way they play with with, with different players uh, that are in the lineup. So we're just going to, you know, try to stick to the game plan and, and really try to, you know, um, you know, counter on their on their weaknesses. I'm trying to be as vague as possible because, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to just tell you guys what we're going to do and somehow Good. Yeah, we can find do. out, you know, and then switch up their whole game plan. So <laughs> you're doing a great job. All right. <laughs> Next up, we'll go to Pat Murphy, and then the final question will be Jordan Angeli. All right, non-tactic question here, Jassy. Um, a lot of things have started to feel more normal, fans back in stands, and, and that seems to be increasing. But teams like Toronto are, are playing in, in Florida. You know, just how much does that kind of affect, not, not the game itself, once you get on the field, I know it's a game, but just kind of a affect your your makeup and thought going into this that you're not going to Toronto you're going to to Florida to play a team from Canada and, and how much has that been talked about uh I mean we didn't really talk about basically them being in Florida um we obviously understand uh weather as you can see you know they have the Canadian teams playing at weird times um with you know the humidity and the the temperatures are extremely hot there um luckily it's a night game and it's not like the montreal game uh but it's still it's still florida you know and, and florida is going to be hot it's going to be humid so it's going to be important that we not only hydrate because we're traveling the same day of the game um but it's it's important that we we manage things on the field you know try to have the ball as much as possible so you can have that um so you can rest a little bit and then you know, when you need to put your foot on the pedal, you can go, you can go at Toronto, but you, ha you can't exert um, a lot of energy um, with, with useless plays, like useless um, runs are, you know, it's just here in, here in uh, Columbus today, it's like cloudy and, and kind of cold. And, you know, the change of temperature is going to be um, much different in Florida. So we just have to pay attention to our bodies and also just try to keep the ball as much as possible. Thank you. You were actually going to have two more questions. So it'll be Jacob Myers followed by Jordan Angeli, and that'll be the final question. Jossi, sorry, joined late here. I don't know if you were um, asked this, but it seemed like the offense kind of got going a bit in the past game. Um, certainly probably not the level maybe you'd want. What was just kind of your assessment on that? And, and when you went through film, where could you guys improve? Yeah, man. Um, you know, earlier on, I mentioned uh, within this interview, it takes a toll when you're playing Champions League and then you're playing season play and uh, the turnover, the rotation of players, uh, players getting hurt, you know, players coming back from injury. So it's it's uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find the chemistry. But as you as you saw last game, you know, we started to, to, to get things clicking and that's always positive. You know, it's a long season, a long year. Um, you know, we kind of had a short preseason, but you know, there's no excuses. And I feel like the more that we're playing together, um, whether it's me, Bradley, Lucas, uh, Matan, uh, Pedro, it doesn't matter. The attackers are starting to understand each other a little bit better. And uh, once our games start to space out, we'll have more time to, to prepare for games. You know, we'll have like a solid five days to prepare for a game on a weekend and really apply everything we're able to do in training, you know, because, because we're playing Wednesday, Saturday, you really only have one day to train and that one day is before the game and you can't even do a full training because you play less than 24 hours. So it's, it's difficult to, to, to kind of uh, go through certain things, but you know, the coaching staff is doing a phenomenal job at preparing us as best they can for our opponents. And, you know, as you, as you see, as games progress, you're going to start seeing uh, more goals. Thank you for a final question. We'll go to Jordan and Joey. Gee, when you're looking at this game and you and Josie Altidore are two of the top, you know, have been seen for so long as the top strikers in the U.S. men's national team pool. Um, do you look at these games and think a little bit, there's a little extra added incentive to perform well when, when you're playing against Josie on the other side? Uh, no, I mean, jo Josie's like a brother, you know, so any, anytime I can step on the field and, and play against, uh, 
Josie or whoever, um, I'm pumped up for the game, you know, because I want my team to do well. Um, I'm always trying to perform well. So, uh, you know, I, I never really look at it at a national team perspective, like, oh, this is my time to shine. I never really do that um, just because our, our relationship is is real tight. Um, you know, I'm he's healthy and, and can play because uh, I always want to try to play and compete against the best team. So it's always nice to, to match up against Toronto. Thank you, Dean. This is going to conclude the segment with Jazzy Zardes. Next up, we'll be joined by Darlington Nagy. Thank you, Jazzy. Thanks, Jazzy. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Jazzy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. We're now joined by Darlington Nagby. As a reminder, if you would like a question, please click the please click the raise hand button. I'll call upon you. If you do not have the ability to record, please send me a message. And I'll make sure to grant you that. For our first question, we'll go to Jacob Myers, followed by Pat Murphy. Hey, Darlington. Good to see you. Um, you you grew up in the state. You went to games when, when you were younger uh, at, at Crew Stadium. Uh, what were your thoughts when you took in the fan reaction of this rebrand and does it change anything? Just how do you kind of look at the new identity of this club? Uh, I mean, for me, obviously being a player, you know, it's like your main focus is just kind of getting out there and playing a game and winning games. So uh, just left that to, to leadership. You know, I think they've come in and done a great job with every decision they've made so far. So for me, it's just trusting them. 
you know, they've done a lot of great things for the team moving forward, training facility and new stadium coming. So uh, I trust them and uh, I'm just looking forward to the next game moving forward. And Caleb talked about after this past game, how difficult kind of this stretch has been with the injuries of Perry and Aiden, certainly kind of compounding that just physically, what has the toll been like for you and our tour? Yeah, it's tough, especially, you know, uh, our tour is a guy that puts a lot of miles on his legs. He's our ball winner in there. So uh, definitely for the both of us, it's been, uh, it's been a little challenging, but, you know, you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. Injuries happen. And, you know, I think we have a good team. So uh, we'll do the best that we can as a group and as a team and you know, the coaches will as well to, kinda, to get these wins and set up ourselves to be in a good position for the season. Thank you, Dalton. Next, we'll go to Pat Murphy, followed by Clay Hall. Hey, Darlington. Uh, Toronto's been in a similar situation to you guys, Champions League injuries, um, match congestion, that type of thing. D does that give any advantage to one team or the other going into this game, or does it does it help in terms of comparison to some of the other games you played where, where some teams are fresher and, and haven't played as many games, do you think? Uh, I don't know if it helps. You know, I think kind of everything's kind of depends. When you get there, you know, how do you feel, how you approach the game, and I think for us and and them too, with the success that they've had recently, you know, I think we're both going to approach the game as it's a game. The players that are out here are going to play. So I don't think both teams will be thinking about, you know, the games that they've had in the past and, and the past results. I think we'll just be focused on that game and moving forward. And, you know, in past against Toronto, the, the, the game has been won in the midfield. Um, how, how big of that midfield battle is there against a team that has another team that has a strong midfield core? No, it's huge. Obviously, they have a, a good midfield as well, uh, as do we. So I think uh, sometimes, you know, we wash each other out and sometimes one midfield gets the best of the other. But, you know, if we wash each other out, then, you know, depending on other guys that come and win games, you know, we have a good attacking group. They do as well. So good team against a good team. So I think whoever's uh, more prepared on the day and takes advantage of the, our opportunities, we'll get the win. We'll get the result. Thank you, Dalton. Next up, we'll go with Clay Hall, followed by Ori Benatar, and then Brett Hilfrand. Hi, Darlington. Uh, off to a good start uh, in, in MLS. Uh, I, too, am just kind of curious about your reaction. To, uh, just the engaged fan base who are so passionate about everything about this club. Were you caught off guard by some of the reaction this week? I mean, honestly, I haven't seen I haven't seen too much of the reactions. Uh, but like like I said before, you know, so far as ownership has come to the come to Columbus, they've done a great job with everything that they're doing moving forward with the train facility and stadium, and and they've put us in the right path. So you know, I'm sure a lot of research and and things go into making these decisions that I that I know nothing about. But you know, so far they have they've been right with everything they've done, and they've supported us on the field. So we're gonna try and do our best to. Sure. Do you feel like? Okay. Do you feel like you're caught in the middle here? I mean, uh, new stadium, a lot of excitement, and yet um, this this new logo has everybody uh, up in arms. It's a tough spot for a player or a coach, is it not? Uh, again, like I said, I don't I don't feel like I'm caught in the middle because I haven't seen too many of the reactions. If any, I've just been focus on this tight windows and winning these games. So I mean, I can't say that I've seen a lot of the reactions. Thank you, Darlington. Right. Thanks, we'll Darlington. Go to, mm -hmm. Next, we'll go to Ori Benatar, Philip Wright Hilburn. That's we'll begin to wrap up our media availability. If you'd like a next question, please click raise hand. Good to see you, Darlington. Uh, kind of expanding on what Jacob asked earlier regarding the center midfield position, obviously with the likes of Perry and Aiden currently injured, you and Artur having to play a lot in that position from for you personally, have you sort of made any adjustments to your overall fitness and conditioning to make sure that you're able to try and go 100% for all these games in such quick succession? Uh, I'll say the biggest adjustment has just been uh, not training as much, you know. For me personally, I'm, I like, I enjoy training, getting that rhythm again of where you're going to try and do it in the next game. So i say that's been the biggest adjustment, not getting as many training days. And then uh, just taking care of our bodies a little bit more than we, than we would usually. Thank you, Dalton. As we begin to wrap up our media availability, the final questions will go to Brett Hilbrand and Jordan Angeling. Hey, Dalton, thanks for being here. Um, you can expect to get press. This is a Chris Armas team. Um, do you like? Do you like it when teams press you? 
Uh, it depends. You know, every game is different. You know, sometimes when we get pressed, you know, we can bypass the midfield and find our attacking guys and Lucas behind us. So sometimes it works to our advantage and uh, sometimes they press us well. So I think it kind of depends on the game and how the game, how the game unfolds. You know, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. So I can't really say if I, I like it or not. And for a final question, we'll go to Jordan Angeli. Uh, thanks for giving us some time, Darlington. Um, you mentioned earlier about the midfield and just how you can sometimes wash each other out. What, what do you feel like the midfield for you guys needs to do tomorrow in order to be the, the successful of the two midfields? I think, uh, I think tomorrow we just have to provide options for, for whoever's on the ball. You know, like we said before, they're a team that, that wants to press. So I think our movement to support the play and getting on the ball and playing quick, uh, switch of play. I think all these little things uh, will give us an advantage if we can execute. And you mentioned Artur earlier um, last weekend, he was top five in the league for mm -hmm. distance cover. Does that surprise you when I say that? Uh, surprise, he wasn't number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that guy, man, so much love for him and appreciation for him. I mean, you know, I don't feel like he gets talked about enough. You know, I think he just does so much. He's a complete player on the ball, off the ball, uh, sacrifices he makes for the team. So definitely uh, one, one of my favorite teammates that I've had so far. I love it. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Darrelson. This is going to conclude the segment with Darrelson Nagby. Next up, we'll be joined by head coach Caleb Porter. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Darrelson. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I know you like being pressed. Always. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you want to yeah. just We'll be joined by head coach Caleb Porter shortly. Thank you for your patience.
<clears throat> Thank you, everyone. We are now joined by head coach Caleb Porter. As a reminder, if you would like a question, please click the raise hand button and I'll call upon you. For our first question, we'll go to Clay Hall, followed by Jacob Myers. Hey, Caleb, just curious about your reaction to the rollout. Fans are certainly uh, engaged and some very upset about it. What's your take? Uh, I'm the coach. My job is to prepare the team to win games. I'm on my fifth game in 15 days. And I don't have a lot of time and energy to think or talk about this, but I do recognize that this is a very important um, decision that's been made uh, outside of the football. And ultimately, I'll tell you where my mindset is. Uh, my mindset is that I trust the decisions um, from the leaders in our club, the ownership, the front office. And I think anytime there are decisions that are made, um, you have a choice. You're either bought in or you're not. And I choose to be bought in and I choose to trust and respect the decisions from the ownership in the front office. And I'm bought in because I trust them, but also because I love this club. I love what I do. Um, but at the end of the day, again, my job is to, to coach the team and to prepare the team to win games. So that's what I'm focused on. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Jacob Myers, followed by Pat Murphy. Hey, Caleb, what's the extent of Milton and Perry's injuries. They've been out a few games now, and I'm just curious if, if you think they could return to the rotation anytime soon. Um, Perry's probably still a couple weeks away. He's getting there. Um, we have quite a few guys out. You know, I'll, I'll just be right up front. You know, we've had a, we've had several guys out. We have even more out this game. Um, again, we're in that fifth game in 15 days, and eventually, when the window's done, it'll be six and 19. So we got to keep grinding. We got to keep using our depth. Um, we had a good session today. Um, we're confident we have enough strength uh, in personnel to win the game, um, but definitely we'll have to rotate. And we do have some guys that are out that won't be able to play this game. Um, Mil Milton uh, is still doubtful. Um, you saw the injury report. Giassi still with that shoulder. We have to be smart, but we'll see. Uh, it looked a little bit better today. Um, Josh was banged up with his shoulder as well. So we're evaluating him. Um, Perry's still not back. Molino's still not back. Ian Morris, Marlon Hairston. Um, Liam Frazier can't play because of the loan agreement. Um, so definitely we'll be going to the bench in a few spots, um, but I'm confident that we can continue to find ways to win games. And it's going to be important, obviously, that we get our first win on the road here coming up. And with Perry and Milton, are those soft tissue injuries? I think it was listed as a thigh and a hamstring. Both of them were soft tissue injuries, yeah. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up, we'll go to Pat Murphy, followed by Neil Davidson of the Canadian Press, and then Ori Benatar. Caleb, um, the Toronto was in a very similar situation to you guys, obviously with Champions League, they've had a number of players out. When you're evaluating a team that has gone through similar situations, does it make it more difficult to figure out how they're going to play because they've had like you guys to use a number of different players and kind of rotate through things in certain games? Not really, because the overarching way that they play is, um, is the same. Um, their philosophy, their structures they use. Um, there's not a ton of variation. So they tend to operate in a way where, you know, the system is um, going to stay the same and the personnel now can change. Um, the, the philosophy and the system is, is the same for the most part, some little wrinkles. Uh, I'm not saying there aren't adjustments. There, there are little adjustments, but for the most part, their their system, their philosophy is the same, irrespective of who's playing. And how much have you seen Chris Armas put his input on this team since taking over? Yeah, I think there's there's a big input. You can see his footprint. Um, you know, he's a competitor. 
he's a intense guy. Um, you know, you can see a little bit, um, and certainly we felt it in the preseason that they have an energy and a, and a, you know, maybe a different mindset in terms of how they approach the defensive side and closing space and pressuring the opponent and creating turnovers um, and playing in transition. You know, they were much more under, you know, under Greg, more of a positional attack team, um, you know, a team that wanted the ball, um, looked to create, like I said, advantages with the ball, disorganize the opponent with the ball to then open up space. So I think you're seeing a little bit of a blend. Um, the pressing's there. Um, I think some guys are still adjusting to that. Some guys are really bought into that. And uh, you still see some some of the positional and possession um, you know, footprints that have been there for several years. So it's kind of a blend of both. Thank you, Caleb. Next, we'll go to Ori Benatar, followed by Brett Hilbrand. And if you'd like the final question after that, please click raise hand. Caleb, I recall last year you telling us before you guys played New York City how they were on a bad run of form and it's a team with that extra motivation to get off the hump. Do you expect that from Toronto with this run of form? And do you think they'll be able to execute, especially with Pozuelo probably out? Yeah, I think, again, you kind of look at a new coach and what he's wanting to do, and you can see that. Um, I think there's no mystery in that. Um, but obviously, you know, Chris is going to need guys to be bought into that, and he's going to need players to execute that as well. So I think there's going to be – it's going to take time. He's a good coach. Um, he proved himself at the Red Bull, um, you know, and, and I think it's taken a little bit of time, yeah, to transition. But also the biggest thing is, again, managing the CCL and, and having to um, figure out ways to win multiple games every three days. Um, you know, so they're in the same situation as us where they've, they've played a game every three days, two or three days. Um, so they have some guys out, we have some guys out, but I think, you know, we know their team and what they're looking to do. They'll probably know our team and what we're looking to do. And um, I always say it, it's simple. It depends on who executes. Some of their execution is gonna be personnel. I believe, my belief is when you make your adjustments within your game model, that you have to use the right personnel um, to be able to execute those adjustments. And then you have to train it. You know, we, we make subtle adjustments always in our game model that relate to the opponent without ever losing sight of who we are and our strengths. Um, and so I think, you know, that's where you can see with them, they're, they're, they're trying to evolve into a more of a pressing team. Um, but, you know, you need the, the time to do that. You need training to do that. And I think you need the personnel to do that. And uh, it's not easy when you don't have training. None of us have training reps right now. Um, it's mostly recovery. It's mostly a little bit, maybe you get some shape work and walk through and some, you know, certainly some video, but you're not getting real reps and you're not getting a four to five day buildup like you normally have um, where you can really methodically slow drip your concepts um, in a way where you know, they're going to be in there and you know that you get those reps, you know, in those ideas because I could have the best idea in the world, but if I don't get to train it and get the reps, then, you know, probably the execution is never going to be what it is when you have a full week. And so I think you're seeing that around the league. I try to watch all the games. And what I see in the games is a little bit hit or miss, a little bit execution, not sloppiness. You kind of see what teams are trying to do, but you can see that it's not perfect. Um, that's kind of where everyone's at right now in this league. So, you know, I think we need to find a way to win the game, even though we know it's not going to be perfect. Thank you, Caleb. As we begin to wrap up our media availability, we'll go with Brett Hilprin, Pat Murphy, and the final question will be Jordan Andrew. Hi, Caleb. Um, when uh, Kind of building off of that, when you aren't able to get those training reps, do you then have to rely more on both individual talent and also maybe a little bit of pragmatism uh, as well, just to, in some way, just kind of putting 
your best players in position to, you know, create and, and, you know, kind of rely on their natural abilities? Not really, because we're not winging it. You know, there's still a plan. We're still very clear in our plan. Um, we spent a lot of time today um, rolling out that plan. Um, so we're not just relying on street ball or relying on just them to figure it out. We, we have a plan. It's just you're not getting the reps to make sure that that plan is going to be executed as clean and clear as it normally is. But the worst thing you could do is just not have a plan, you know, because then now you don't get training at all and you have no plan. So, you know, we feel like through, especially this window, because we at least got a day of training. When you have a three day, you get at least one day. When you have a two day, you don't at all because you got to recover mostly. And it's a walkthrough. So we did get a few reps today. Um, I think our challenge is less about the reps. It's more about rotation um, and being smart. And obviously with the injuries we have, we don't have a ton of options. So can we find a way to get a result in this game? Knowing that we're probably going to be in the next three days in a better position in terms of personnel decisions and selections and, and health. health. Um, this was always a game we thought we'd rotate, um, not because of the opponent, but because of the cycle. You look at the six games, you know, this is a game, you know, that we always felt like we had to do some rotation and some, we've had some rotation in the other games as well. It's been natural, but not much. This is one for sure that, you know, we have to be smart with because the guys are starting to get cooked and this is where you get injuries. And, you know, we do, we do have a few soft tissue injuries, but, um, I, I don't think the ones we've gotten are from load, um, you know, and, and we've looked at that. Um, and then some of them are just contact, you know, and there's quite a few of those actually, um, whether it's a, a knee tweak or whether it's a shoulder. Um, but I think Milton will be back soon. Perry will be back soon. Um, so we'll get, we'll get healthy. Obviously we hope that G will be good to go. Uh, Josh will be back soon. So next next game, we're going to be a lot more healthy. My job is to find a way to win this game with the guys that we have. Thank you, Caleb. Next up, we'll go to Pat Murphy. And the final question will be Jordan. Caleb, Giassi, when he was talking, didn't want a comparison of, of him and Josie for this game. But obviously, they're the two veteran U.S. national team guys that, that could be involved this summer. Do you do you sense guys get even if they don't want to talk about it, get up when they go against a, a player that you know they're they're directly competing with, so to speak, for national team spots? Do, is is that really a thing, or is that overblown? Maybe from the outside, probably overblown. I think again, if guys have to get up for a game, you know, if they have to use that to get up, then what are they using the next game to get up for? You know, these guys are professionals. It's like asking if I'm motivated to win games, you know, every game I'm motivated to win every week. Um, I try to be on top of the prep and you don't have to tell me how to do my job. Um, I know how to do it. Doesn't mean I'm perfect at it. I'm, I'm certainly reflective when I make mistakes, but I know how to do my job and I've proven that. It's the same with players. The ones that know how to do their jobs, you don't have to motivate them. They're always ready to play. And maybe you find a little bit of extra motivation in some ways, but if you have to rely on that, you're probably not going to be a good player or a good coach if you're having to rely on, you know, billboard material or little motivations. Um, you should be consistently motivated and up for every game. And if you're not, you're probably not going to last long. So you look at Josie, you look at Giassi, I think they're always up for it. Um, I don't look at it as a chance for them to show anything other than the players that they are. Thank you, Caleb. And for a final question, we'll go to Jordan Anjoy. Hi, Caleb. Thanks for your time. Um, I have two questions. The first one, over the last few years, you've talked a lot about instilling your identity and the culture within this club. 
when you're in a stretch like this, how important is what you've built over a lot of years, knowing that you can call and rely on players who maybe don't have a lot of playing time under their belt, but they know what you're expecting of them? Yeah, I think it's you rely on really your building and um, the understanding of, of how we play. And you will have some variation, you know, that you, you do. But I would say the teams that have more continuity in what they're doing have a better chance in these windows um, because of that train behavior that's already there, that's already clear. And if you're a team that it really relies on adjusting every game and and you have a team that's not um, clear in your game model, when you don't have those training reps to change the plan or to game plan to stop the opponent, then you're in trouble. So that's why I believe in always working from a position of strength focused on yourself. And, you know, whether that's 80%, 90% in some cases, maybe you use 60% and you adjust 40%, but you, you have to have an overarching way of playing that you build from every single week. And the good teams always have that. And then there's some little adjustments. Um, you can't be predictable. You have to adjust. But in a period like this, we do have to rely on our understanding and our understanding of who we are, our understanding of our strengths, but I have to look at the personnel playing too. And I have to make adjustments that fit those guys. And I have to come up with a plan that fits the opponent as well. Because if I'm just thinking that the way I trained my team three weeks ago with four different guys in or five different guys or six different guys in and just assume that that's going to happen um, and work would be very naive. And I think that's for me, the, the worst form of coaching is being naive and not looking at, okay, this guy's in, how can I come up with a pattern that works or a rotation that works for him? Or we're playing against this team and I know who's playing in the midfield. So I know how they press and I know maybe this is probably what's best for this player in the game. And those little adjustments I think are the, the key in coaching, not big adjustments where you're changing everything, but little adjustments. And I think the simplicity in little adjustments is what the best coaches do. Um, Cause if you change too much, if you try to come out with these elaborate um, tactics and it's too much the players without training and the players, you know, without a clear understanding of those things, um, it's, it's a lot of just uh, noise. <laughs> You've been a player, Jordan, right? Yeah. And you've seen coaches that don't prioritize, right? I had to prioritize today the most important things. And, you know, I, I know a lot of things about, you know, obviously Toronto. But if I try to give the guys 10 things to work on, they're not going to be able to do it. We don't have training to do it. So I need to give them a couple things to be good at, you know, tomorrow. Things that I think are the most important priorities. And, you know, again, we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'll look at myself. I'll look at what I can do better. My last question real quick is just, I, I was talking to Darlington earlier about our tour and he was top five in the league in distance covered in the last game. Um, and Darlington said he's not talked about enough. How important is our tour to this club when they are playing good, good soccer? Yeah, he's, he's key. You know, when we put it all together, I think you've seen it. Um, you know, no one, no one can, can't, no one can say that they don't know what we're about and what we look like when we put it together and we're fluid and we have the opportunity to train and get reps and play our style. Everybody knows what we're about. It's just trying to figure out now within that, how we become the best version that we can when we have guys out and when we don't have training. And the good thing is, is that no one's in their best version right now. Um, a lot of people have injuries. A lot of people are cooked physically and mentally. And I think we rely on everything. The mentality that we built, on the game model, we rely on our depth. 
Um, we rely on our, I rely personally on my, my assistant coaches. I rely on the sports science staff, the medical staff, everybody. So everything adds up, everything's important. And I, the reason I believe that is because in windows like this, you need everybody and every little detail matters. Um, but personnel is probably the most important detail, you know, and if you don't have guys in, it's a little harder. You got to figure it out. Our tour when he's in, He's a machine. He covers ground. He's our box to box eight and he's an animal. Um, but he's obviously a guy that is chewed up a little bit right now. So we got to figure out whether or not he can even play. Thank you, Caleb. That's going to conclude today's media availability. Uh, Caleb, if you don't mind staying on the rest of you, thank you for joining us. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Thank you. Take care.